few Westerners ever got to meet Pol Pot whilst he was in power. One who did was American journalist Elizabeth Becker, who interviewed him in 1978. What struck me first was that he was much more handsome and a charming smile. There was, there was some charm to the man. And um, we were told to sit down, put the cameras away, and we were to sit there and listen to Pol Pot. And when the, when the time was up, the time was up, and he said goodbye. With her was another journalist, Dick Dudman, and British academic Malcolm Caldwell. To Caldwell, he was more indulgent. He told Malcolm Caldwell how wonderful the, the communist experiment was in Cambodia. Totally, two totally different interviews. One was a lecture and the other was an interview. Later that night, back at their hotel, an unremarkable meeting with Pol Pot was about to turn into an unforgettable nightmare. A few hours later, I woke up because I could smell cordite, you know, the smell of um, a gun being fired. And then I heard shots on the second floor. Lots of shots. I didn't count them, but lots and lots of shots. And so I went upstairs, and um, Malcolm's body was on the floor, and, you know, white with death. The gunman walked in and murdered Malcolm. Why Malcolm? The friend, the one friend of the regime, and not us. Some documents suggest it would have been me. Another one suggested it was Caldwell. Why? We, we, it doesn't make any sense, but nothing makes sense there. Needless to say, after all that, I couldn't imagine how Cambodians lived through almost four years of that. I mean, what I went through in two weeks, they lived through four years and saw their whole lives, their whole country, everything destroyed. 